Hello Kusudin, hope you're doing well. This is Charisma and today's video will be for new players. After browsing some reddit posts of new players pointing fingers at the ridiculous difficulty of some outposts in normal, I decided to undertake less advanced tutorials so you can get your hands on Meteor Maker without being frustrating. Keep in mind that Meteor Maker is a game where you will have to learn from your mistake in order to perfect your strategy as a raider but also as a builder. In this tutorial, we will look at the basic combos and I will share with you one of my social outposts, Hansville, that I created specially for this video. You can find it in the social raid section by typing its name or look for twitch.charisma as a player ID. This outpost contains some basic setups so you can challenge yourself while learning the game. Also, I invite you to raid this outpost before I explain the setups in it. For each video, I will try to make a base with a minimum of challenge but if you find it too hard, I would love to hear your feedback to make the outpost less frustrating. Now, pause the video, raid Ansville, and come back so I can explain you the setups. Or, you can just stay and learn more about the basics. Now that you have raided the outpost, or not for that matter, I will explain the various basic combos. As the videos go on, we will talk about more and more complex combos with harder and harder bases. Don't worry, I don't want to have a high kill ratio, but to challenge you gradually so that you are ready to storm the outpost of other players who will only seek to kill you. Let's move on to Hansville setups. This setup is very simple, and with some variations, can be very effective even against the best players. Here we have a hollow cube with perfect image and eagle eye mods. The hollow cube is positioned so that it detects you right next to the other hollow cube on the ground with perfect image. Since behind our first hollow cube is a ball shot that we shoot its arrows, you will have the choice of deflect the arrows with the fury edge, or you protect yourself with the arc barrier, or you position yourself behind the wall on the right. If you raided the outpost and fell into the hole hidden by the hollow cube that is behind this wall, you most certainly noticed an impaler. I've positioned this impeller here so you can't see it even if you detect the hollow cube. This makes it more dangerous because you do not have immediate vision on it and you do not even have to put other traps to increase the pressure on the player. The incinerator at the end of the corridor is there to distract you and focus your attention. This trap will certainly not have killed you because the real threat lies behind your back with the impeller with the unrelating mod. This mod allows the impeller to deploy until you destroy it, since without a mod, the impeller will deploy only once. This setup, often used, can vary with mods and is very used by many builders and remains relatively effective. A kill room that is different from a kill box is to build a spacious room where it can hide many traps and guards. The goal of these rooms is to apply strong pressure on the player with multiple threats coming from different directions. For obvious learning reasons, this room does not contain many traps or guards, but it gives you an overview. Expect to raid much more intense rooms, sometimes ridiculously hard and unfair. I do not hide it. The goal of a game is not to make an unpost where you will succeed the first time, but to surprise you while having fun. If you find yourself in outposts that frustrate you more than you enjoy, don't hesitate to abandon the outpost. Keep in mind that your fun is your priority and not everyone has the same notion as fun. The Enforcer, which is located high up, has short leash and plate mods. He is here to force you to use your ammunition and to move forward at your own risk. The Imperial on the left, which you don't see at first, is here to kill you as you advance while your attention is on the Enforcer. The three corrosive cubes at the top of the slope are here to an unexpected threat in the path of a raider. These corrosive cubes apply additional pressure if the raider moves forward. Using corrosive cubes is very useful, especially when the raider has already used his double jump, which means his grappling hook is his only source of her movement to escape. Perhaps some of you pass through the corrosive cubes. In some cases, and you may have noticed it, you can survive travers, such as during a fall, or when you use a grapple to go from one side to the other. On the far left, 
we have a ball shot that is pulled back to avoid being visible. This ball shot targets the slope where the real path is. Of course, it is better to hide it behind another cube, but for reasons of difficulty, I prefer not to put it and give you the opportunity to spot it. Above, we have another setup with three different traps. A piston, which is here to attract the attention of a raider and try to intercept the fastest. An impaler on the left, right next to the piston, in case the raider moves slowly to destroy the piston. Then, we have a bomb ejector aiming down on a slope. Bomb ejectors should be used with caution, as they can destroy your traps with their bombs. For your information, any trap or guard that explodes, throw physical projectiles, or launch physical attack can destroy your traps and guards. So be very careful when you build, unless it's voluntary. But we'll come back to that in another video as well. The Insmitio Maker has physics. We'll play with it to improve the explosion coverage of our bombs. Thanks to the slope, our bombs will bounce in the direction of the descent. It is quite possible that some of them will bounce and stay in the area where our impaler and piston are located. We might backfire, but it may be worth it if we kill the raider, since the raider may not have seen the impaler. Which means, next round, the raider will destroy our bomb ejector, but maybe not our impaler. Finally, we arrive at the gen map. When the raider takes it, we have two traps that activate, and that are in second wave. Which means, they only activate once the gen match is taken. For the fastest of you, you must have seen a ball shot getting deployed. This ball shot is here to show you that when the raider takes the gen map, the traps take time to deploy. So avoid putting traps around the gen mat if you have nothing to block the raider at the level of the gen mat. Instead, place them further on the way back so they have time to deploy. Also remember that every trap that is getting deployed met a particular sound. As you play, you will be able to recognize the traps that are deployed according to their noise. I will let you discover what these noises are. I do not want to spoil you all the discovery of the game. Then, our last trap is a second wave bomb ejector, which is curiously placed as an impaler. This bomb ejector works like the first. Its bombs will go down the slope and maybe catch up with a raider to try to flee towards the exit. Some bombs would also bounce back so that they will return to those who decided to retreat. With some mods, it's easier to play with your environment. Here, I prefer to not put it in order to give you a chance. The trajectory when launching bombs is completely random, hence the random results when you use it. That will be all for this video. I hope you enjoyed this format and it will help you to better understand the game. Do not hesitate to share your opinions so that I know if the content I propose is adapted or if there are some improvement to be made. In any case, I will prepare other videos with increasingly hard setups so that you can learn and understand how to build well, but also quickly identify the combos you might face when you, when you raid. Also, I do not recommend for the moment to raid my other outposts, since they are not designed for the tutorial, but you are free to try and explore to understand my setup. Until the next video, I wish you good luck, custodian.